Hello! For anybody who is joining in later, I don't want to just sit here awkwardly and stare at the camera for a bit, so how are you doing? This stream is going to be about pretty short. Um, I'm just here to talk about the Mavic Air 2 because I recently received my very own Mavic Air 2 Fly More combo. So I was sent just the Mavic Air 2, luckily from DJI. They were super nice and sent it to me for free to review. But I do have to send that back soon. So I decided to go out and buy my own Mavic Air 2 because I've liked the Mavic Air 2 so much. So I decided to go with the Fly More combo. So in an upcoming video, I'm going to be comparing the two to see is it worth it to get the Mavic Air 2 Fly More combo or should you just go with the regular Mavic Air 2 and buy the accessories separately? So uh, with that being said, that is the premise of the upcoming video. And I'm just here to answer any questions that you have right now about the Mavic Air 2 because I haven't really answered any uh viewers questions at this point i've just kind of been answering some general questions that a lot of people have had so if you've got any questions about the mavic air 2 definitely let them uh, let them be in the comments right now um say can you say hi to anthony hi anthony and hello to everybody else who is joining in on the stream. I appreciate you guys being here. If you want some behind the scenes chaos of what goes on when I'm filming a video like this, it usually never looks like this. This looks all nice, you know, all nice and good. It's all organized. But then you look in the background and there's a box there. There's this for my camera. There's a tent bag or a pop-up tent bag. And then this, it looks pretty chaotic right now, honestly. <laughs> It is uh, quite a bit of a mess. Got some clamps and a lot going on. So that is the background of uh, this video. The video will probably look pretty decent, but then seeing this background will not look anything like the video itself. Is that a snake? Yes, that's a good, this doesn't have anything pertaining to the Mavic Air 2, but so many people have been asking me about these snakes. They are fake snakes. They are not real snakes. I promise you they are fake. We have a ton of them. And the reason is because, because we have this basketball court over here. There are so many birds that fly around that these actually do tend to scare them off. So we just have a bunch of these random fake snakes around because we want to scare off the birds or else they end up pooping all over the basketball court. And it's pretty annoying. So that is the reason why we've got those snakes. I see a ton of people ask about them all the time. So if you're here and you've been wondering about that yourself, then there you go. <laughs> Mavic Air 2 is on its way. Cannot wait to start flying it. Yes, it is a fantastic drone. And it is really like, it genuinely has blown me away with all of its specs. I mean, from the beginning, after seeing its initial launch, I was very surprised um, as far as the specs go, but actually having it in my hands is just a completely different deal um it is it's pretty light compared to the average like mavic air or mavic pro um but it still flies and performs as if it is one and it's got some specs that just outperform the general mavic pros so i just really like this mavic air 2 i didn't like the original mavic air 2 because it was lacking some features and it to me was just not a drone that would work for me but this is something that i could definitely see myself carrying around pretty much everywhere and using a lot of the time just because it's so convenient to carry around because it's not as big as a mavic pro but i mean it's not as small as like a mavic mini it's just just in general i think it is a good buy so i'm not saying that because dji is making me say that or anything because they're not and they haven't paid me to say anything like that but it is a pretty great drone um, as far as other questions go, huh, I have the Mavic Mini. Yes, the Mavic Mini. I Also, for those wondering about the Mavic Mini videos, I promise you they will be returning very shortly. Um, I've just had to be on a grind of putting out Mavic Air 2 videos because of that review unit that was sent to me by DJI. Um, they did ask in sending it to me that I made a certain number of videos, so I've just been punching out a bunch of those videos in the meantime but the mavic mini content will resume very shortly because i actually have to send back that review unit in about i think it's a week from now so uh i will be sending it back soon how much uh 
I'm guessing you're asking how much do these cost? So cost-wise, the Mavic Air 2, just the Mavic Air 2 kit is 799 US dollars. But if you choose to go with the Fly More combo, which comes with all these additional things that you see here, that will be $988. So it is $189 more if you choose to go with the Mavic Air 2 Fly More combo. Um, but uh, it does come with a decent amount of accessories. So if you want my full opinion on whether or not I think that's worth it to buy that, uh, definitely make sure you stay tuned for a uh, video coming out very soon. So hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed and you're new around here. Also, if you're here in the stream right now, make sure to give the stream a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, let's see some other questions. I'm 15, I don't know what drone to start with, but my dad told me to go small first, so I bought a Mavic Mini Fly More Combo. That is a good choice. I really liked, I, I still love my Mavic uh, Mini Fly More Combo. It, I truly thought it was a great deal. Uh, for only $500 getting everything that you got, it was just, it blows my mind that they're able to sell that level of, you know, technology and drones now for that price so um good choice there and if anybody in here is wondering for like a beginner drone i would definitely still recommend the mavic mini so if you're looking out there for a drone then i would say that but if you're like in the middle range to even high range and you're looking for a new drone this mavic air 2 is like your best friend it has I really like the fact that it's got 4K 60 and can do 120 frames per second at I think 240, or not not 100, well, I don't know what I'm saying. Yes, 120 frames and 240 frames per second at 1080, I believe. And it's just pretty great. And the 8K hyperlapses, I haven't really been able to play with too much yet. Um, I tried to when I first got the Mavic Air 2, but I didn't realize that by default in settings, it is set to not record in the 8K high resolution. It's set to record at like 1080p. So I was pretty disappointed when I got back to editing and realized that it was uh, not exactly the quality that I was expecting it to be in. So, yeah. Do you have any issues with fans? Some guys are complaining to have high temperature. Um... I have had issues with the Mavic Air 2 getting really warm. Uh, if I have, like, out right now, just, like, leaving it set out in the sun, not necessarily under this shaded area, but when I've left it out in the sun before, um, I have had issues with it getting pretty warm and the fans get really loud. Um, but other than that, that was, like, with me leaving it out for... I probably left it sitting there for, like, 25, 30 minutes. So, like... I wasn't flying it around um, and I wasn't really using it. It was just sitting on the ground because I was filming. But other than that, I've not experienced any high temperatures. No, I've even with the controller, like I've had with the Mavic Pro Platinum, my controller has heated up to a significant temperature before where like the fans are just going crazy. Um, I have not experienced that with the Mavic Air 2 controller. I'm not even sure that the Mavic Air 2 controller has a fan in it. It may not, I'm not sure. If anybody knows, let me know uh, right now. But as far as I know, I don't believe it has a fan. So I've not had any experience with this being like super loud, um, you know, while I'm flying around with the controller. Um, another, one cool thing that I really like that they included this, this is just such a small thing, but it's something that you usually wouldn't go out and buy otherwise, unless it's included like it is here. So this is actually a, battery converter so you can plug this into the battery you can plug this into the bottom of your battery and then it will output two usb a ports which is pretty cool because that allows you to go and charge either your phone you could charge like your watch like if you have an apple watch you could charge like anything you want pretty much off of these batteries and because of their high capacities that could be super helpful if you're somewhere where you don't have you know a typical battery bank and you just want to get some juice out of your drone batteries um that would be super helpful and would have been super helpful for me a couple of times uh, with other drones, but I've just never had one of those adapters before. So I thought that was pretty cool to see that they included that. I didn't realize that they included that until I just unboxed it. Um, hi, Carson Miller and everyone in the chat. Hello, JSK 
Kenterprise. How you doing? Is it possible that an antenna is broken because I've been getting pretty ba bad range? Uh, are you, what drone are you flying? I mean, it could be possible, but it depends on the drone you're flying. Like if you're flying an older DJI drone that doesn't have like OcuSync, then you could be having issues just because it's uh, based over Wi-Fi, so you're not having as good of signal. Uh, but otherwise, I'm not sure. If you're having, if you have like a Mavic Mini or a Mavic Air 2 and it's a newer DJI drone, then I would say you might have a broken antenna. Just not sure. I just haven't personally encountered really bad range with either of them. Um, Mavic Air 2 has insane range. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. I know it's 10 kilometers, but I don't remember what that translates to in miles. So if you're wondering, just translate 10 kilometers into miles, but it's got super good distance. Um, also, I've mentioned this before, but the Mavic Air 2 just has so much stronger of a build quality than the Mavic Mini. And I get that the Mavic Mini, they had to make it really light because they wanted to stay under 500 grams. And they also just wanted to, you know, make it a cheaper drone so more people could get it. Uh, so I get that that's the reason why the Mavic Mini was cheap, cheaper made, but the Mavic Air 2 just like in comparison is unmatched because it uses like thicker plastic, uses uh, thicker propellers. So I wouldn't see them breaking as often. Um, and overall, it's just, I really like this drone. So I am looking forward to finishing this video because um, I've been working on it today for a little bit and I wanna get up and flying. Uh, I have a GoPro 3 Plus. That is a pretty old GoPro. I have a pretty old GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition and I recently got myself the Hero 8, and it has been, Hero 8 Black Edition, and it has been pretty awesome. I've used it in a couple of my videos. I don't know if you've noticed the new uh, angle. Sometimes I have the chest mount on, so then you can see like down towards the controller. Uh, I chose to do that recently. I don't know what you guys think about that, but I think it's pretty cool to have that angle at times. I don't think it's like an angle that should be overused because it can be a little odd at times, but Otherwise, I like having that. What time is it where you are? It is currently 2.41 p.m. GoPro cameras are not good. I love the Osmo ca uh, camera so much. I have not tried any of the Osmo uh, action cameras yet. I was considering it when I was going to buy the GoPro, but I don't know. I have seen like the stabilization in the Osmo action cameras is pretty, pretty great in comparison to the GoPro. Like it's crazy. DJI really has their stabilization technology down and I, I don't know. I, it was just a matter of the price. I think the GoPro I got on clearance and it was cheaper. So that's why I went with that over the Osmo. But Otherwise, I may have went with the Osmo, but does anybody else in here have an Osmo action camera? I don't remember the specific name. I just was reading off of the comments, so if you could update me with what the actual name is, I, that would be helpful, but uh, has anybody else had any experience with those? And if so, how does it compare to a GoPro if you've had both? Uh, what camera are you on right now? I am on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. So this is just the forward-facing camera and the other camera. It looks pretty, I don't know how it looks for you guys, but it looks like pixelated-ish. That's probably just due to the streaming. So it's lowering the quality, but I'm not sure if the um, YouTube app is doing that or what. Um, but yeah, that is what I'm filming this on right now. Uh, what I usually film on, if you were asking about that, the main camera that I use is the Panasonic G85. And I do on occasion use my older Panasonic G7 uh, for recording like secondary, secondary clips from a different angle. But yeah, for me right now, that's what I use. And then I use a Kamika, uh, wireless lav system, which, or lav system, which I have reviewed in the past. So if you're interested about that, I do have a video. I don't remember specifically what it was titled, but just search like Carson Miller Kamika. <laughs> and then, uh, you should be able to find that. And then as a backup microphone, which has come in handy recently, because this has failed a couple of times. So I don't 100% recommend this, especially if you're flying drones around and using this at the same time, 
because I have found that they interfere with each other, or rather the drone interferes with this microphone. So it does introduce like some clicking and popping and it's super annoying in post because then this just becomes completely unusable. But otherwise I have had a positive experience with this, except for recently when I got the Mavic Air 2. Something about the Mavic Air 2 this Kamika microphone just does not like. So anyways, this backup microphone is a Rode Video Micro. So I just have these both plugged in through a uh, stereo split out cable. So this um, converts the single input, the left and right input into separate left and right uh, outputs. So, or inputs. So I can plug in both microphones at the same time. And then in post, all I've got to do is split the stereo audio into separate mono channels and then I can use that which is super duper helpful if I ever have any failed audio of the wireless lav. So that is what I've got for my camera right now. Uh, do you like to go different locations to fly your drones? I love to go different locations to fly my drones and I'm sure most people would agree with that. Uh, for me personally where I live it's quite boring to fly drones for, to just to be frank, um, I really wish I had more interesting locations to fly at around me, but I don't really. Um, I try to venture out at times, but it's just it's difficult sometimes when I'm filming videos because I don't want to film somewhere where somebody will go and get mad at me for like filming on their property or something like that. And then if you're filming in a public space, then you have to deal with you know a lot of people walking around and wondering why are you filming, and that can get kind of annoying at times. But to go back to your question, yes, I do like flying my drones in other locations. Specifically, I really liked flying my drone in Arizona this past January before COVID all happened. That was a great experience to fly the Mavic Mini out there because there was some beautiful views and I would love to go back there again. Um, I feel like the Spark is a waste of money. At this point, yes, I would 100% get the Mavic Mini over the Spark. Um, Obviously, I think the Spark has more, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it has more autonomous flight modes as far as like having sensors on it uh, because it was built to be more like you could like use your fingers to take a picture and do different weird things with it. Um, so I guess it does have that over the Mavic Mini, but other than that, the camera quality is better on the Mavic Mini and I would just personally recommend the Mavic Mini over the Spark at this point. Not that the Spark is bad if you have it, but I just wouldn't personally go out and buy that uh, over the Mavic Mini since the Mavic Mini is out now. How often do you replace the props on your drone or just when you see a defect on it? That's a good question. I usually go, well now with the Mavic Air 2 Fly More Combo, um, I could replace them <laughs> a decent amount of times before having to buy my own, but usually I only really replace them if uh, one of them break or it has been like a really long time since I've last replaced them but I don't although I should I just don't really have like oh geez everything's going flying um, I don't really like replace them on a schedule so that is something that I should do uh, with being a part 107 remote pilot but uh, I don't really fly my drones that often so um, it's really not that financially uh, whatever to replace them for me all the time just because I don't really put that many hours on my drones other than if I'm filming a video or I'm going on vacation. So uh, yeah, I don't really replace, replace them that much unless I see something uh, broken on one of them or let me see. I do have a confession, uh, confession time with this Mavic Air 2 that was sent to me by DJI. Uh, I have crashed this now a number of, I think I've crashed it three total times now in the last three weeks. I don't know what it is, but this Mavic Air 2, I don't know if it's the fact that I'm just getting like karma for having this sent to me and then I'm just crashing it. I have no clue, but I very rarely crash drones, but this one I've crashed more than any other drone that I've ever flown. And I don't know why, I don't know what's up with this i guess i'm just expecting it to like avoid things more or something i don't know but i have crashed this a total of three times now i feel really bad but it has happened i was just going to look at this to see if there was any like prop damage i don't believe there is uh but 
the most crashes that I've ever had has been on this review unit of the Mavic Air 2. And the places that I have crashed um, include over here, this tree, uh, the video I released, uh, I think it was last week or the week before about autonomous flight modes. I crashed it straight into this tree and it was, it was very close to hitting the ground. I thought it was a goner, but luckily it was not, it did not hit the ground. So it didn't die or anything like that, but there was that. And then I also crashed into a uh, telephone line and, or power lines. And I forget where, I think the other one was at, it was at another location and I hit another tree. So overall, I've crashed the Mavic Air 2 more than any other drone and I don't know why, but I have. So there you have it. I don't know how I got on that topic. Oh, about the propellers. What kind of place is most ideal for flying drones? Well, first off, the most ideal place is a place that is not, uh, that you're actually legally able to fly a drone at. So usually I go and use um, either Kitty Hawk or um, I forget the other apps that I use, but I usually use um, a couple of different apps to check and see whether or not flying in that area is legal. So that's the number one thing as far as choosing a best area to fly in. And then secondly, I usually try to just find Either it's unique in some way, like it's got like art installations around it, or it's got really beautiful nature. I'm not sure specifically, but you know, you, you would know when you see it. Um, those are usually the type of places that I fly in, but you can't always fly in those places. You can still find beauty out of <laughs> drone flight in pretty much anywhere you fly, but I definitely... Um, prefer to fly in places that are either unique to me or um, have something cool with them that I haven't seen from the sky before. How is the Mavic Air 2 in the wind? Can you fly in say 20 mile per hour wind? That is something I have not fully tested yet. Um, I was going to do that with a Mavic Mini and I still want to do that but I just haven't really experienced super terrible wind. Today there is a decent amount of wind. As you can see, the trees are moving and I'm sure you've heard wind in the microphone of the stream a couple times, but um, there is wind out today, but it's not like the craziest wind. So I would say the wind that's out here today is probably the most intense wind that I've been in this far. Could it take 20 miles an hour winds? Uh, I haven't tried it, but I can assume it would be able to take that because it's max flight speed in sports mode is 40 miles an hour. So I would think that it would be able to go and deal with 20 miles an hour wind, but it would probably be, you know, probably at a pretty significant angle to move against the wind if you're flying against the wind. So yeah, is part 107 hard? That it kind of depends on your past experience with you know, aviation and drones in general. It's really odd how much the part 107 test doesn't actually pertain to flying drones. And the main reason for that is because it's also for uh, pilots of remote airplanes. Um, so you have to know things about like drag on a airplane wing or uh, you also have to know how to like read different weather, like a METAR for weather. Um, you'd have to do like a bunch of random things that you may not even think about when it comes to drones. But overall, the, mo the difficulty of it, I would say if you go with the drone course, like uh, Remote Pilot 101, not being sponsored or anything, but that's what I chose to use myself. Remote Pilot 101 has been a fantastic resource for me as far as my part 107s go. So, um, I would recommend checking out a course like them and um, it shouldn't be too difficult if you take a course like that. Now, if you're going out and you're trying to like watch YouTube videos and get all the knowledge that way, that does work for some people. But for me personally, I like to have a more dedicated course that I know is made for the test. So that's why I chose to go with Remote Pilot 101. And if you do that, you should be all set. And it really is probably not going to be as bad as you would think, but it still is pretty weird. I just crashed my Mavic Air 2, which I got yesterday into a telephone line, and it was my first time flying it. See, that's the thing.
for me, like I, it's so weird because I didn't even crash my Phantom 3 standard. I only crashed it one time in my entire time of owning it. And the only other times that it was crashed were from my friends or my brother flying the drone. So the fact that this is a new drone to me and it has like more sensors on it and all that, and I crashed it three times in three weeks, just kind of blows my mind. I don't get why I've crashed it so much, but whatever. It, it hasn't damaged the drone. The only thing that it's really done to it was it did put a little bit of green scuff marks when I crashed into the tree, but I was able to just rub those off and it was all good. So luckily it didn't damage it. Um, my recommendation, rem my recommendation is also remote pilot 101 is yes, it's a fantastic course. Have you ever want to max height on Mavic Air 2 or Mavic Mini? No. And you should not either because flying over 400 feet AGL or above ground level is actually illegal in the United States unless you have a part 107 and you're flying within a 400 foot radius of a building or structure or mountain or something like that. Um, in which case you can fly within a 400 foot radius of that and then you can fly 400 feet above that. So technically you would be going over 400 feet above ground level, say if it was like a skyscraper or something, but um, you would, uh, you know, you would be able to legally do that, like if you had a part 107. So flying above 400 feet, uh, I have done a couple of times, but only when I've been around a building, honestly, or a tele, or not a telephone tower, a um, like a cell phone radio tower, which I've done a couple of times. Is there any rules in Canada? Oh yes, there are definitely rules in Canada. And I can tell you now that the rules in Canada are even worse than the United States. Um, especially recently, I don't remember off the top of my head what they are, but um, they're pretty much dialed down far more than the United States are. So kind of stinks for the Canadians in the audience who are watching and want to get into drones, but they are pretty rough. I would recommend just Googling um, Canadian drone laws and uh, you should be able to find stuff there. What music do you like? I like pop music. As far as music that goes in videos go, I use Epidemic Sounds um, for all of my music, but uh, from there, I just kind of choose what sounds right for the video. It doesn't really matter the genre to me other than it's just got to sound right to the video. So um, I don't really have a genre of music that I use for my videos. Um, so yeah, if you've ever wondered where I get all my music from, it is from Epidemic Sounds. Anyways, this stream is almost to 30 minutes now. I really appreciate everybody who's been on here. If we have any further questions, I'll be ask, or answering, I'll answer two or three more questions about the Mavic Air 2. So if you've got anything, leave them right now and I'll answer them. But other than that, I appreciate everybody who's here and has stuck around for this long. Definitely hit the like button if you haven't already. Um, if you've been sticking around this long, why wouldn't you? I film, uh, that doesn't have to do about the Mavic Air 2. Uh, let's scroll up and see if I've got any questions about the Mavic Air 2. Do you think that the Fly app is a little too simplified for the Mavic Air 2, or do you think it has enough function for the Air 2? That is something that I've thought about a bit myself. Um, I do like the fact that they're using the newer Fly app over the uh, DJI Go app, just because the Go app was getting so full of different drones. But um, as far as if it's lacking functionality, I personally haven't really seen too much that it's been lacking this far, other than it is missing the ability to adjust the gimbal speed, which is something that is like, that's like base level something that should be included. The Mavic Mini has the ability to change the speed of the gimbal in settings. So I don't know why that's not there yet. I'm assuming DJI is working on it and should be adding that into the DJI Fly app later. But um, as far as everything else goes, I have not noticed any like lacking in functionality as far as the DJI Fly goes, Fly app goes with the Mavic Air 2. So um, 
yeah, I don't think it's like too simplified. I think it's at a good level. Um, obviously, if you are like a pro level pro, then you may disagree with that. But for me, as just an amateur to on occasion, more pro uh, level flight with this, I don't think it's lacking too much. Okay, two more questions. Um, is there a huge difference between the 12 megapixel and the 48 megapixel mode on the Mavic Air 2? Um, I honestly thought there would be a bigger difference. I mean, there is. There is definitely a difference, but it's not as huge as I thought it was because I think what happens... Uh, when you do use the 12 megapixel mode is that the DJI Mavic Air 2 goes and takes a 48 megapixel photo and then it like downscales it to a 12 megapixel Because um, I mean it is using the full sensor. So if it's using the full sensor, then it's obviously got to use that 48 megapixels. So the downscaling isn't as severe as I thought it would be because when you look at the 12 megapixel photos and the 48 megapixel photos side by side, they really don't have the biggest difference. Um, if you are zooming in like really far and you're pixel peeping, you will notice a difference. But if you're looking at it from like a general point of view, there really is not um, like that big of a difference. But if you are like making large scale prints or something like that, then a 48 megapixel photo will have more detail than a 12 megapixel photo. So that is convenient in that case. Now, one more question about the Mavic Air 2. Let's see what it is. Uh, any other questions? If nobody else has any other questions about the Mavic Air 2, then I guess I'll just end the stream. I already liked the stream. I, I appreciate that Commander plays. Uh, any more questions? I guess this isn't really a question, but Edward said that the camera would overheat and there would be a horrible reflection. I'm not sure what that's in regards to. I don't know if that was about the 48 megapixel thing, but, um, I have not experienced the camera overheating at all, so I'm not sure where that came from, but... Let's scroll way up. Maybe there was a missed... I, well, I know there was some missed questions. And I appreciate everybody asking questions. Uh, sorry if I missed your question. But, um, yeah. Oh, my phone is about to overheat because my screen just dimmed a little bit. Well, I don't see any further questions. Okay, here's a question. What type of flight time have you been getting? With the Mavic Air 2, I've been getting around, I would say, 27 to 28 minutes of flight time um, before landing. So it has gotten really close to standing up to its 30-minute flight time that it um, claims out of the box that it has. At least I believe that's what it is. I think it's 30. It might be 31. I'm not sure. But um, I've been getting an adequate amount of flight time on this, and I've... I haven't had any issues with it. And now that I have the fly more combo, I've got two additional batteries. So that will be super helpful when I'm out flying and need the additional charge. So yeah, there is all of your questions answered. Clearly not all of them, but uh, I appreciate everybody who has stuck around on this stream. Is it 34 minutes? If it's 34 minutes, then I've definitely been getting around 30 minutes. I don't know. It's about three minutes short of the total uh, minutes. So if it's 34 minutes, then that means I'm getting about 31 flight minutes. Sorry about that. I'm thinking about like my Mavic Pro Platinum. Anyways, though, um, I appreciate everybody who's been around on this stream. If you haven't already and you're new here, definitely subscribe for a future video about this Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic Air 2 uh, fly more combo also hit the subscribe button to let me know that you liked this stream um also follow me on twitter instagram snapchat i don't really use snapchat that much uh at carson m tech and uh yeah that is pretty much it for this stream thanks again for everybody who's stuck around you guys are awesome see you in a future video